So today we're talking about the best written fantasy. This isn't a my top 10 list or my favorite series or authors list. This is specifically about overall skill. We're talking about prose, we're talking about impact, we're talking about execution of ideas and what the author seemed to be going for. How well do they do at this? Characters, world building, plot lines, like all encompassing really, really skilled authors. I will be leaning heavily on prose because I think that's what a lot of people think of when they think about best written, but I'm also talking about just wider scope, what authors do a whole lot of things incredibly well. Some of my favorite authors and favorite series will not be on this list because there are many authors that I love that I, they just, they don't, they don't fit here for me. Doesn't mean I've stopped loving them, just means that this is this is a specific topic we're talking about. But if you wanna know about my favorite authors or my favorite series, both of those videos will be linked in the description. And because this list is subjective, it's talking about who I would put on the list based off of my judging criteria for best written, which is, there's no line in the sand for how to judge that. I would also love to hear your best written if you wanna make your top 10 in the comments and it, please suggest to me more authors after you hear my list and you hear what makes people fit in this criteria, I would really love more suggestions because I'm always looking for new authors to dive into their work that just write really impactfully. First author on this list is going to be N.K. Jemisin. Uh, I've read a couple of her series and standalones. My personal favorite is still the Broken Earth trilogy, specifically book one. I've read all three and I enjoyed all three, but books two and three don't hold a candle to book one in my opinion. I mean, they're still good. I still enjoyed them, but book one is a masterpiece to me. But the reason she makes the list for me is one, she can write this, uh, really in everything that I've read from her, whatever kind of emotion or feeling she's trying to convey, it leaps off the page and it latches itself onto me. And it's very depressing a lot of times, which means that I feel really depressed reading her stories, but she makes me feel whatever it is that she's trying to make me feel. Very <laughs> flawed characters. And I still latch onto them and connect to them and want need to see them do okay and and I suffer when they suffer but also she is a writer that can reach right through her prose the way she articulates something relatively simple but she words it in a specific kind of way that packs that punch so much harder. She doesn't just state things. She really thinks about the verbiage that she uses, the way that she says that, says things, and that makes her books hit so much harder to me. Next up is Robin Hobbs. Specifically, the Live Ship Traders trilogy is the trilogy that I enjoy the most of hers that I've read so far. I haven't read all of her work, but of the two trilogies that I've read from, it's the Live Ship Traders for me. But regardless of what trilogy I'm reading from, I think that she's an astounding writer. She's a very long form writer. <laughs> um, she likes to describe everything in the world, but what's amazing about her is where most authors, I think if they wrote to the extent that she wrote, would be deemed boring, and rightfully so. Somehow, the way she draws you into what is a seemingly mundane scene and makes you, or at least me, feel like I'm on the edge of my seat despite how it's so mundane what's happening, but she makes her characters real. And so experiencing these day-to-day -day things with them that don't feel significant to the overall story, it feels significant to the reader because we're so, because I'm so invested in what the characters are experiencing and on what's going to happen in every aspect of their life. She also, at least for the Live Ship Trader trilogies, had such a satisfying conclusion to how everything just came together and was clearly planned out the whole time, which is obviously the feeling you want to give your readers, but like to the smallest little details, the world came together and all, all these different regions and cultures all connected in the end when before I wasn't entirely sure how it all would. And she can make me hate someone like, like few authors can. Someone, again, mundane. Someone who's just a normie. He's not even a mustache twirling baddie. But I hate Kyle. I do. Next up, a book that I'm sure everybody expects to be here because when you talk about well-written fantasy, this 
is not gonna be a surprise to be on the list, and that's The Name of the Wind. Rothfuss cares about his prose. He cares about how he says things. And I think that whether you love his story or you hate it, I happen to love book one and, and have big problems with book two. So I kind of fall in both camps. Uh, so regardless of if I love his book, book one, or, or I've got him right here. I don't know why I'm not holding him up. If I, if I love his book or if I don't so much, I can't, I can't ignore the fact that he writes in a, in a way that's unique to him. Not only is his prose beautiful, but he hides things within his prose. So he thinks about the way he says everything to where there's a reason that big, big hard fans of this series have been able to not stop talking even after long gaps between books. And it's because there's stuff hidden everywhere. There's clues everywhere. Everything, even scenes that are minor, seem like maybe they matter. Which is why, even though I had huge problems with book two, I'm I'm still kind of like, all right, but are you gonna change my, are you gonna change my mind in book three? I don't reckon so. Like, I think no matter what, I'm gonna consider that a weak book for especially as a follow-up for book one. But, I mean, you might. I think Rothfuss has some major flaws in the way he writes certain things, particularly in the way he writes women, but several things. There are some major flaws in his writing, but as far as just being a skilled writer, he has to be on the list for me. Octavia E. Butler. So there are some authors on this list that write kind of sci-fi fantasy. They, they kind of they use both the genres, so this is, I'm calling it a fantasy list because it's more fantasy leaning, but you will find authors like Butler who writes both, and sometimes both at the same time, and it's just gonna be fine. So Butler, whew, she, she's a new read for me. I'm on my fourth book by her right now. And some of her books I love, like one of my favorite, some of my favorite books in the world, and some of her books I hate, like some of my least favorite books in the world. But no matter where her books land, no matter, no matter where she is on the spectrum, I feel like I've walked away with something because she writes themes. She writes ideas and she writes discussions and she writes compelling stories, interesting stories to go along with those things, but she has something to say and she's someone that I want to listen to. But even Wild Seed, where I walked away saying, I don't really know if I liked that or not, but I couldn't stop reading it. I, I needed to know what would happen to these characters. I wanted, um, Ah, oh, it's been a little bit. Anyawu. I wanted Anyawu to make it out and to be okay and for her kids to be okay and I wanted Doro to die. Did I like the story? I don't really know, but I needed to read it and I haven't been able to, I needed to, I needed to read it right now, all, now, all at once. I needed to sit down and just read the whole book. I didn't read it all at once, but that's how it felt. And I haven't been able to stop thinking about it afterwards. And then there's books like Kindred that I haven't been able to stop thinking about and that I loved so much. And books like The Fledgling that I hated so much and I haven't been able to stop thinking about. And now I'm reading Dawn and I can't stop th thinking about it. Her books take up my whole brain while I'm reading them and long after I've finished them. I think she writes very skillfully. Again, she's a slow writer. You, you take your time with her books and she doesn't have big explosion plots even to the very end, it's just not really her style, but I kind of love that about her stories. Next up on the list is Susanna Clark. I've read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell as well as um, uh, Piranesi, which I think, I think is all she's written or at least published, but I could be wrong. But those are the two things that I've read of hers. Susanna Clark writes soft magic systems exactly right for me. And in these two very different stories, I was there. You just, I just sink into what she's writing, even though, again, she writes very slowly. Even Piranesi, which was a very short book, you gotta really just take your time with it. You gotta, it's gonna take a minute to build. But then it does, and then it's so satisfying to me. But she writes world and magic systems that feel bigger than the book. It doesn't feel like there's a plot that's happening. It feels like there's a world that's happening and we get to step inside of it for a minute and watch one thing that's happening within the world. But when I, when I stepped in, the world was already moving and things were already happening. And when I leave, when I run out of pages, it will continue to go. She writes worlds and magic that feel impossible for me to hold in my hands and impossible for me to hold in my brain that I 
am so lucky to get to see a glimpse of, but it's so much bigger than me and it's so much bigger than this one story. And I love books that do that. Oftentimes, I don't feel that way with fantasy. It feels like, okay, this is the story. But with her books, it feels like here's a story, but that's not even the biggest one. I love that feeling. Next up is Discworld. This is a new one for me. You may not expect to see a satirical book on a list like this, but Pratchett, he can play with language. I mean, it's pretty impressive, actually. He will take the most mundane phrases and kind of twist them to make them mean something else. Or he'll take a sentence and make it mean different things to multiple characters and they'll respond in different ways. Or he'll, he'll, he, he just really likes to play with the way things are said and what that means and how that directs the story. And I've never seen another author do it quite like Pratchett does. I tend to really appreciate authors that play with language, authors that, that don't just use a sentence in the most obvious way possible, but really kind of like N.K. Jemisin, authors like Frederick Bachman, who doesn't write fantasy, um, but authors that take a phrase or a word and they change it a little bit to give maximum impact. I'm a sucker for that kind of writing. Pratchett does that, but he also does that with comedy intertwined with it and with just twisting the language just a little bit further even even still. On top of that, he has very quirky oddball characters that are are all very different from the last, a huge cast of characters that are all very different from the last and that are each uniquely lovable, even when they're really, really flawed and have some major problems, I just, they're just so squishy. I just wanna, I just love them all so much. And on top of all of that, he has something he wants to say in his books. He's got themes that he dives into and digs into and wants to discuss in, in a way that just kind of opens the door for discussion. Like for instance, book two in the Night Watch, it's very clear what he's talking about, but he explores it in so many different angles and through the characters, not through like a narrative dump. And he does a really good job. Next up is Ken Liu. This is another new to me author. I've been reading through his short stories um, and I haven't tackled any of his novels yet, but I plan to soon. So I don't like short stories, novellas, um, novelettes, <laughs> all short form fiction. That's wrong for me to say I don't like because there have been some that I've loved. Some of my favorite things are short form, but they're more often a miss to me than a hit. In, in his short form books that I've read so far, I have not found a miss yet. He writes very unique, very interesting ideas into a compelling story and manages to flesh out those ideas and that story in so few words. It's really astounding to me. Uh, if you want a taste of his work, if you haven't checked him out yet, um, I, I really loved uh, one that I read recently. The Perfect Match, I believe it was called. It's your classic sci-fi, um, which again, he kind of weaves fantasy and sci-fi together. He actually, there's a, there's a note that I've read of his, a quote that I've read of, of his that said, I don't recognize the separation of sci-fi and fantasy. Um, which the way he writes his sci-fi and fantasy, I agree. They're really, they're all, it, it's tangled together. But anyway, the, the perfect match was your classic sci-fi uh, technology is advancing at a rapid rate and it's disturbing how much humans are accepting certain things without question. Like that, that standard idea for classic sci-fi written that idea that is typically explored more in novel form, written so shortly and concisely while still being so well explored. It's a familiar story or a familiar idea, but written so concisely, yet still holding all the impact and all the questions. It's me, it's astounding to me. He has a lot of really unique stories as well that aren't just like your standard, here's, wh here's what you've seen explore a dozen times, but this one, I really loved because it, it's, I really like this concept. I really like this idea and, and novels around it. But just I was so impressed that, that he was able to explore it just as well, in my opinion, as other authors that I've seen before do, but with so few words. Again, I'm excited to explore his novels. I have a few short stories yet left to read before I before I move on to the novels, but I've just been, I've been so impressed. He's proven to me that 
short form fiction doesn't have to be just, oh wow, what a surprise, this one actually worked for me, but he's consistently impressing me with it. Okay, the last ones on this list I'm going to speed up on because these are uh, authors and series that I speak about more frequently on this channel. So if you're familiar with me, you've heard me talk about them quite a bit. So for the sake of time for this video, as well as for the sake of just not being super repetitive on this channel, uh, I'll speed up these last few. I have a couple more on the top 10 list and then I have a few honorable mentions. Truthfully, I haven't been keeping track of the count. So the final ones and the honorable mentions are gonna kind of blend together, but you'll survive. Neil Gaiman, I think, again, is an author with prose that I love. I can tell that everything he says, he says intentionally, and I, I love it, but I also sink into his worlds. He has very alive, very living worlds, um, and I, I love going to them. I don't think that his character work is tops. There's definitely better authors for character work, in my opinion, but his worlds are tops, so kind of a trade-off that I'm okay with. And as far as the stories that he tells, they're just always so intentional where everything comes together in the end. And I just, I, even if his, even if it's not a story that I particularly love, the craft of it is constantly impressive to me. The Lord of the Rings, you've heard of it. Again, I've never, I've never stepped into a world that breathes like the Lord of the Rings breathes. This is a living world. This is a living, breathing world. And I have the honor to get to live in it sometimes. If I could go to any fantasy world, it would be the Lord of the Rings. If I could live anywhere, it would be the Shire. I like the characters, I like the plot. Uh, he definitely, there are some scenes that I do think could be shortened to touch, <laughs> but I've never read a world like I've read the Lord of the Rings and I'm happy to walk slowly through it. Malazan, I think Steven Erickson is one of the most holistically skilled authors I've ever read from. He writes a, epic <laughs> world. He writes individual, complex, astounding characters that are different and that are different levels of likable, but I understand and I understand what made them this way. The characters change so much from one book to another, but I see the thread of that change and I understand it. His prose, I freaking love his prose. He just, he, again, he sinks me into the world. I think that he thinks through the way he says stuff so that it has the right impact. The magic is so cool, even though I don't understand it. I love it. Uh, fans of Malazan oftentimes will say, he doesn't hold your hand. And while that's true, I wish he'd hold my hand just a little bit more. But even though I don't understand everything that happens in this series, I I don't, he's one of, he's one of the most holistically skilled authors I've read. Action, world, characters, you name it he probably does it well. One Piece, this is kind of weird to put in here because I have been talking about prose so much and with it being a manga, it's not written in traditional prose or I don't even know if you could call it prose. But as far as epic worlds, incredible storytelling, intricate weaving of plots, characters, backstories, different islands that all have their own ecosystem and culture and belief system and customs, yet they all are connected and they all affect one another. You go to this island and the weird ways that it works actually affects the way the next island works and how how that functions and they have to adjust. And it's just the intricacy of the world as well as of the storytelling in this series is astounding. Not to mention the character work. My goodness, I've... <laughs> done many character exploration videos for individual characters in this series and I could go on for a long time because even side characters have so much to them. Again, it's a series that has its flaws, just like everything on this list, everything is flawed, but my goodness, this series has been so much more than I ever expected it to be. I have a video, Why I Love One Piece, that's spoiler free for anybody that has seen me loving on it for the last few years and want to know why? <laughs> you, that, that'll explain it a little bit. I don't know where the top 10 list ended and the honorable mentions began, but I do know that I'm in honorable mentions now and I'll just mention two more authors that, again, I'll say quickly because I talk about enough on the channel and that's gonna be um, 
Scott Lynch and Joe Abercrombie. The reason they are honorable mentions despite writing some of my favorite series uh, is because I think that they both write certain things incredibly and then have some pretty distinct weaknesses. I love Scott Lynch's prose. <laughs> a lot of people don't, but I do. I think that he's hilarious. I, I love the humor in the Gentleman Bastard series. I love the characters. I love the relationships with those characters. And no matter what plot we're doing, the first book was a heist, the second book was pirates, the third book is political. No matter what we're doing, I just want to be with the characters. I like the world, though it's not the most astounding world I've ever been to, and I do think that Scott Lynch is a weak plotter. Abercrombie writes characters like no one else can. He writes morally gray, complicated, not good guys like no one else can, and he writes grimdark. He writes he writes a world where characters can't catch a break, <laughs> and he does it in just a way that feels just honest. His writing just feels real honest, but again, a weak plotter. It's not to say that I don't enjoy each of their plots. I think that they're both, I, I like what they write, but as far as skill, their plots are usually more on the weak side compared to other stories that I read. So there you go. That's my list of top 10 best written fantasy slash sci-fi that I've read so far. No, not set slash sci-fi because Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy would be on this list if I was saying this is fantasy, but some authors eat that sci-fi in and it just kind of goes together sometimes. Anyway, that's my list of best written. Hopefully as you've gone through this list with me and heard my reasons why you understand what makes, what makes a series qualified as the best from my perspective. But I'd love to hear your perspective. What would make a series best for you in this particular category of best written? What what are the qualifiers for you as a reader? And what are some of the series that you would put in your own list or some of the authors that you would put in your own list? And based off of the things that I talked about loving in this, in this video, are there any authors that you'd recommend that I try out? Because this is a category that I, I just, I'd love to read from more authors like these. I post videos every Monday and Friday on this channel, Tuesday and Thursday on the second channel where I talk about what I'm reading week to week, give uh, reading vlogs spoiler free as well as more in-depth spoiler filled discussions on my favorite books. So check out the second channel if you're interested in all of that. I'll see you again soon. Bye.